Hello everyone. I am still hesitant that I needed to share this because it'll just show how old I am if I share my past. I mean, that's just an old people thing, right? But I felt this might shine some light on some of the frustrations, especially to our up and coming future generations. First thing first, I do not like any discrimination toward anyone. And I have to come to the fact that haters are going to hate no matter what they say. So my story is only to express how I dealt with my obstacles when it comes to discrimination toward me. And maybe it can inspire you to find your own way to defend yourself. Before I share two of my stories, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you will not miss any of my uploads. As you all have seen the title of the video. Okay, I'm sure I'll try to be serious about this. But I will always feel like my seriousness is just not a strong trait. So that's that. Anyway, on with the story. Choo choo! To tell you how I defend myself from discrimination in college, I must share the stories how I was being discriminated against at the particular university. If you have watched my previous stand-up comedy reaction video, I'll put the link up there so you should know by now that I graduated from that school, particular with a theater degree. Note that. This university has a very high percentage population of Asian students in school. Ironically, in the theater department, it had the lowest rate of Asian students. I know, mom and dad. I knew I was only going to be good enough to play doctor, lawyer, uh, accountants, and real estate agents. Maybe that's why the teachers had a hard time communicating with students with English as their second language. Remember that phrase because I will say it again. To start off with this amazing school system, there are requirements that you need to complete in order to get your degree. Some of the classes were taught by students <laughs> working on their doctoral degree at the school. So if you think you're getting all the educations you need from wiser people, that's not always the case. They're learning and researching for their higher education which I think is not bad, but the teachers are somewhat biased if you're taking their courses. For example, we all had this drama literature class to get the degree, right? And I remember this PhD student who was teaching the class. He was assigned a critical thinking essay to begin his class, and he would always give me a bad grade because my grammar was horrible and still my grammar is just not any better now. He refused to look at my critical thinking essay because my English was just not good enough for him. I know, right? I wish I was born knowing English from the start instead of any other languages. It was a struggle for me at that class, so I outsourced for help for my final paper. And I got a much better grade, but one day he pulled me aside after class and asked me how I did so well on my paper. At that time, I was being honest and telling him that I was not getting the right education I needed because he would not look at bypassing my grammar and of course, I wasn't getting the grade I wanted. So I seek help somewhere else. But he couldn't stop asking me how. Like, how did I write such a well-written paper at the end of the quarter? That's when I know that he thinks I plagiarized my paper, but he couldn't find the evidence for it. Yep. Just when you think you are being honest, someone out there was trying to fish something bad about you. So anyway, I got a C in that class. And since the drama literature series had a total of three classes to complete, I switched the teacher for my second quarter. Little did I know, the second teacher was also his roommate at the time. And I don't know, they were similar. So he gave me a D instead. Oh my God, my GPA must suck. I actually graduated with 3.5 GPA, believe it or not. Stick around, I'll tell you how I graduated with a crappy grade like that. Now, at this time, I felt I was being discriminated against, but I thought I 
just have to finish this series and D was still a passing grade anyway, so I moved on. Now for the third class. I decided to switch the teacher again. And before I start the class, I told this teacher that I had issue with my writing and I couldn't get a good grade because those two would just wouldn't want to look bypass my crappy grammar. You know what she said though? She said she'll only critique my critical thinking skill and that's what the class was all about anyway. And guess what? I got an A for the class. I mean, to be honest with you, I personally don't think I am a smart person, but I do know I work really hard for what I do. And I think for people who feel the same way, I just want you to know that don't give up because there are always other ways to achieve your goals. I always believe that if one door is shut, the other door will open. And if that door doesn't open, you kick it till it opens. Well. This was not the only time I felt discriminated against at this university. Which leads to my next story. If you have watched this far, I thank you and please give a thumbs up. The next story I'm about to share will make you even angrier. Or not. Choo -choo. I started with a community college and I transferred this university after I found maybe it was the right choice for a higher education. So I already was doing theater in my community college, performing on stage, and did most of my acting training with my amazing teachers at the community college. I had at least three years of acting training before the transfer. I mean, this is crucial to the story. And I was pretty excited to take acting classes with the professors at the university, you know? Like something new. Little did I know. It wasn't anything new, if not worse. In acting class, we were working on this heightened language piece that what I mean by that was like Shakespeare or Chekhov or Ibsen or anything that's more of classics. When it came to me performing the piece, I always, always get this one critique from this professor. She always conclude my acting with, oh, English your second language, you just need to work twice as hard and that's it. As a reality check? Duh! You think I don't know that? I mean, but as an acting critique, what the heck does that mean? I mean, what, what was my objective? My, my intention? Did I get my message across? I mean, did I convey what I wanted to say? How was my delivery? I know. English is my second language, but so what? I mean, this critique is just a way of brushing me off and just feel like I was a foreigner and I shouldn't be doing acting. Ugh. Even now talking about it will piss me off. But she's the professor, right? So I guess I'll just talk to the head of the department. Little did I know. I was barking at the wrong tree. <laughs> I went to the head of the department and confronted him about how I was being not being treated fairly by my acting professor and how I would like more critiques even if it was negative. I mean, I did not mind learning from something new besides just telling me that English was my second language. Guess what he said? Hmm? He said, well, maybe there's nothing else to critique from your acting. <laughs> okay, some of you might already be, oh hell no, you did not just say that I was a crappy actor with no talent. But you know, I actually went along with that, oh, maybe my acting was good, but English as a second language was kind of in my way. Obviously, I, I was lying to myself because I got C grade after this class was over. And note this, I had already been doing theater for three years and I am still getting a C grade. Clearly, I felt discriminated by the whole thing. How did I defend myself? You know how each class when it was about to be over and you would take a survey to evaluate the instructor? I took the advantage and wrote the whole essay with the thesis statement how I was being mistreated 
by this particular professor and by the whole entire theater department. Yep, go big or go home, right? I wrote a full long essay with an intro, three body paragraphs, and a conclusion. And because of that, the professor actually pulled me aside one day and asked what grade I think I deserve for the class. I said, at least a B. And she gave me a B at the end. I mean, I should have asked for an A though. Now I think about it, well, I'm just humble, I guess. <laughs> you see, it's not always easy to fight for what you deserve. And sometimes it's harder, especially when you are at the lower part of this food chain. But know that you're not alone. It's hard, I know, and it sucks, I know. But don't give up. It's a time like this you realize what's good for you and what's toxic. Like how I'm still to this day cherish and grateful for the teachers and mentors who made me who I am today. And that positive thinking always fuel you to become better. So when you think about giving up, think about what other ways you can achieve your goal so you can push further. It took me eight years to finish college. I changed three majors before I landed with a drama degree. Like I said, I'm not the brightest person, but I guarantee you I worked really hard. I know I was just going to share these two stories with you, but I did mention about how I graduated with a high GPA, even a crappy grade in one of the class. My advice is to focus on your strength and don't try to correct your weaknesses. What do I mean by that? The theater department had this rule that you needed to help with their theater shows in order to graduate. So they had requirements of hours of work. And if I remember correctly, it was four hours per unit. And each unit you complete would give an A grade. At that time, because my acting instructor was horrible, so I turned to theater sound designs and lighting design to further with my theatrical craft. And I started to do a lot of crew works and I earned about 19 units before I graduated. That's like 19 units of my A grades. And it was a huge boost for my GPA. This was like the alternatives, right? How could we fix the situation we were in and pursue what's best for us? I would love to speak fluently in English, but that wasn't an option at that time. So what else could I do to get what I want? And what else can you do to get your voice heard? I love to hear about your story. Later on in my life after college, I used this anger and turned it into fuel to put up this theater play that I produced, written, and designed with the concept of how I wanted to prove that there's a place where race is not a problem, gender is not a question, age is not a limit, and language is not a barrier. And in that play, we can all communicate it just freely in a space. On that note, thank you so much for listening to me till this far. I truly believe that there are more good to the humanity than we might think. Love will always be stronger than hate. Be safe out there. Love you all. Peace.